Our Pacific Northwest trip continues. We are just at Enchanted Forest and Oaks Park. Now we're at our third and final stop and that is Wild Waves here in the Seattle Tacoma area. They're home to four roller coasters. Uh, their most notable addition is an SNS wind roller coaster and that is Timberhawk Ride of Prey. They also have an Arrow Looper, a Wild Mouse, and a Kitty Coaster. I think they're primarily known for the, wild, for the water park, hence the name Wild Waves, uh, but still it should be an interesting visit. So let's go on in and see what we can find. Right when you walk into Wild Waves, you have Hoax Lagoon, this big splash house. That's the first thing you see. Off the distance, though, we can see our first roller coaster. So, just got some bad news. Looks like Timberhawk, the ride I was talking about earlier, is currently down. Uh, I mean, you could see it from the parking lot, and I was waiting for a train to run, and I didn't see it go. So, I figured something might be up. Maybe it's on one train or something, but one of the employees said it's currently not operational. So. Fingers crossed it'll open because that would suck if we came all the way here and it was down the whole time. They have this small little lake off to the right. It's almost in the center of the park. Looks like they got a little SNS space shot. A little sky coaster over there. And still more water park, which appears to be just entirely on the left side of the park when you enter. Oh my gosh. Look at all the carp or fish. I don't know. Either way, it reminds me of Indiana Beach. Also saw this at Tobu Zoo and Adventureland. Oh, oh man. Oh my gosh. I love the name of the sky coaster. I-5 Dive. That's great because Wild Waves is literally right on Interstate 5, just right on the other side of Wild Thing. Not to be confused with Wild Thing at Valley Fair, which I call Mild Thing, but I don't know, this might be even more milder than that. Look at those undercarriages. Man, it's rare that you can see directly underneath the train like this. All right, here's a lesson for you uh, coaster enthusiasts who are just getting started. So what you're seeing right here is the anti-rollback and the chain dog. So the one in the foreground is the anti-rollback. That's what prevents the train from rolling backwards on the lift hill and just stopping in place. The one a little further back is the chain dog. That's what latches onto the train to pull the roller coaster up to the top. Wild Thing was a pretty standard Aero Loops crew, not much to it. I mean, I've done multiples of these before. It's a short ride, it just has the three inversions, so it has the vertical loop and the two corkscrews. I mean, you know, it's a pretty standard ride, so I mean, I knew what to expect. The thing that I thought was most interesting about it is that they have the entire train still operating with a manual release and lock. So they, the ride operators have to come through the station and push down on the foot pedals and pull up on them uh, in order to lock and unlock the trains. They don't have it hooked up to just a control panel to where they can push a button and it does it. So I don't know. I thought that was interesting and you know the nerd of me likes seeing that I guess. This part of the park is actually a big wide open area. I feel like they could do a lot more with this. It almost has this kind of empty feeling. So I was just chatting with some locals and there used to be a ring of fire here, you know, a Larson Looper. Look at these concrete footers. You can see this queue here. Yeah, this is where it would have been. And now there's just nothing here. Yeah, that's kind of weird to see. Is that the New York, New York roller coaster in Las Vegas? I think it is. I don't know. Someone comment. What is this if it's not that? Looks like some sort of Togo. That's kind of creepy. Very old school Ferris wheel here. This right here is the wild mouse. I was told it has not operated since like 2017 or 2018. So it is sitting there all silent. That is a shame. I had no idea until today that it's been down for that long.
This is actually a great theme for this attraction, Timber Axe. That's awesome looking. It spins you around 360 like the one at Kennywood. We are just not having good luck today. Here's the kitty coaster. That's not open either. Yikes. Someone who's been here before and knows this park well, what is this? I have no idea. It looks like a conveyor belt of some sorts. There used to be like a slide here or something that would pull rafts up to the top. That's my guess. But I have no idea. Just found out it's been down since yesterday. Not a good sign. I don't think we're going to be getting lucky today. Oof. So even though the ride is down, here's a couple of fun facts for you guys about Timberhawk. So it's one of only four SNS wooden roller coasters ever built. There's only three still standing. This is the only one left in America. Uh, the other one that was in America was in Wisconsin Dells. It was called Hellcat, and that has since been removed. This ride, even though it was designed and built by SNS, it was physically constructed by Rocky Mountain Construction as a subcontractor. It also happens to be where Alan Schilke and Fred Grubb met each other for the first time was on this construction site. Pretty interesting, right? If I could compare this park to any other park I've ever been to, by far it would be Alabama Adventure. I mean, think about it, they both have kind of one main attraction, a wind roller coaster. It's way in the back. Most people come here for the water park. They have very few other dry attractions, and they also have a lot of attractions that are closed. The parks are heavily wooded. Yeah, definitely getting Alabama Adventure vibes. I don't know if that's a good or a bad thing. Well, that's it for the day of Wild Waves. You know, I've only been here for like an hour and a half, but I'm just, I'm just done. I mean, I, I know staffing is a big issue at parks this year, so I'm trying to be understanding, consider that that's probably why a lot of the rides are closed, but I can't help but say it really does affect guest experience. I mean, it, especially atmosphere, you're walking around and there's just nothing open, especially when your marquee attraction, Timberhawk, is closed. I mean, that, that sucks. I don't think that's because of staffing. I, I think there's probably just something wrong with it, which is just unfortunate. It just means that I just came on an off day. Uh, I imagine that it's probably not like that all the time. It, from what I've heard, it's actually a fairly reliable ride. So I hope whatever is wrong with it, they're able to get fixed soon. Uh, it just sucks that the day I happen to go happens to be the day it's down because that's really the attraction that I came here for. Um, so I, I can't say that you know I'm leaving this place with the most you know upbeat, happy uh, attitude. Um, I, I don't know. Wild Waves just didn't do a whole lot for me, frankly. Um, it, it just seems like a shell of an amusement park. You walk around and not only are a lot of rides not open because maybe because of staffing or something, but there's also just a lot of land not being used. It just feels uh, kind of like ha half done. I feel like some of the areas really could use improvement. So um, I don't know. It's, it's too bad, especially since I have no idea when I'll be back here. From what I've gathered, it seems like the water park is the main draw here. Um, so, I don't know, maybe if I, I was doing some of the water slides, I'd uh, think that they're pretty good. I have no idea. It seems actually like a, a pretty decent sized water park. Um, so, I don't know. Yeah, it's too bad. But thank you for enjoying this video, uh, I hope. And uh, let me know if you've been in Wild Ways, what you think of it. And uh, make sure to stay tuned for more here at Coast News. And we'll see you next time.